two weeks to go before we uh, see the presentation of the union budget by the finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Now, taxpayers are demanding some kind of immediate relief when it comes to income tax, something that hasn't happened in recent times. And the question is why? Will they get the relief this time? Is the finance minister, like she indicated in the past, uh, waiting for a sign-off from the uh, prime minister himself? And when it comes to demanding that tax labs be linked to inflation, indexing against inflation, is that likely to happen? Is this a fair demand? Let's discuss this with Abhishek Rastogi. He's the founder of Rastogi Chambers. And Mitali Nikori is also with us. She's an economist and the founder of Nikori Associates. Great to have you with us uh, this evening. Uh, let's put this in context first. Uh, Mitali, coming to you first, from a pure economic sense, how much sense does it make for tax slabs to be linked to inflation? So thanks a lot, Vikram, for having me and uh, always such a pleasure. So I think, you know, definitely there are many countries. And in fact, I was uh, you know, reading a lot of the literature from the IMF, uh, you know, before this, uh, before this uh, discussion today. And there is a school of thought which argues quite vehemently that, you know, linking taxation slabs with inflation actually reduces the burden on those people who are at the bottom ends of the slab and especially those who are very much at the margin of a slab. So I'll give an example. Say, for example, if your salary is 10 lakhs and you're in tax slab, which charges you 20% taxation, suddenly with inflation, your salary actually increases to, you know, uh, 11 lakhs or 12 lakhs. And that pushes you into, say, a 25% taxation slab then you end up paying a lot more tax only because of inflation and your take-home salary reduces. So, you know, in order to correct for these inflationary uh, pressures, the United States, for example, is one country that automatically links its slabs to inflation. So there is definitely a school of thought which, which definitely impacts those who are close to the margin of the tax slabs. So for them, it's, it's much better to link it to inflation. Abhishek Rastorgi, uh, do weigh in on this. We haven't seen our tax labs change for the longest time. Uh, why do you think that's the case? And is this the right time now to kind of reconsider that? See, the entire fundamental principle is the bracket creep which comes into play when you mix or compare taxes with inflation. If we see the direct tax collection in the last 10 years, it has gone up by 160%. If we see the GST collections in seven years, it has also gone up almost doubled in the last seven years. And hence, as a result, what has happened is that the tax to GDP ratio has gone up from 5.62% to 6.11%. And there could be various reasons for a robust tax collection. You know, more of banking channels and widening the tax base, better compliances, and the systems have improved. The government has made sure that in these 10 years, there are robust compliance mechanisms, less of tax evasions. Now, when we have the robust tax collections, both on the direct tax side and the indirect tax side, yeah. and the aggregate tax to GDP ratio has improved over the last 10 years, I think this is a very legitimate demand from the consumers so that their purchasing power is not uh, reduced. So what must ideally happen is that for these tax brackets, which, you know, where the government feels that the purchasing power will have a lot of role to play because of the demand elasticity, etc., the benefit of tax must come. And that must come by way of uh, direct tax benefit so that the purchasing power uh, is increased. Now, what is important is that if we see even the Indian tax structure, such as capital gains, the capital gains are linked to the indexation benefit, Correct. which means that we have a concept in India yes, wherein, the indexation. Cons wherein the indexation benefit comes. Correct. The same benefit must flow in to determine the tax exemptions or the low tax rates and at what rate the uh, highest income tax step should be. Right. But in recent times, Mitali, how much has the purchasing power been impacted by rising inflation? As far as taxpayers are concerned, how much has the brunt been and how has that affected India's economic uh, stature by way of GDP? Exactly. So I think this is the core question when it comes to making a policy decision on an issue such as inflation indexing your tax 
uh, slabs, you know, because the entire question becomes how much is bracket cream a problem? Or <clears throat> do we feel that our inflation rates are very much under control and that's why bracket cream only impacts a smaller section of the population and implementing, you know, a regime where there is an inflation index taxation, uh, you know, mechanism is more complicated. So, you know, what at what point do we take that decision? And I think here, uh, Vikram, the biggest question becomes how far has inflation impacted our entire taxation regime? And as per you know, the analysis that a few economists have done, I have personally not done it, but I've been reading their work. And <clears throat> what I found is that because inflation, we have an inflation targeting regime in India, you know, so we have to keep inflation within a range of 3% to 6%. Now, because we have managed to maintain this inflation targeting regime of this 3% to 6%, and in the last you know, several years since this regime has been introduced in 2014, so in the last decade, actually, we have not seen inflation cross 6 to 6.5 percent very often, it's except during COVID, you know, because during COVID, it was an exceptional kind of economic situation. So if we have been able to maintain our inflation rates within a certain, you know, defined radius, is the cost of having, you know, inflation-linked tax brackets actually worth it? That becomes, you know, the question. And a lot of the analysis that I've read says that it doesn't because, you know, at the end of the day, the bracket creep is not that common because inflation is within this targeted range. So under the new tax uh, regime, as far as the government is concerned, we're talking about any kind of concessions being taken away. If, uh, you know, that kind of scenario exists because that is what the government's push is, uh, Mr. Rastogi, then does it become much more important that we give this kind of leeway to taxpayers who've been consistently paying taxes on time, growing the government's coffers, that we link it uh, to inflation? Because as far as the growth of the economy is concerned and the ability, like you said, of the taxpayers to increase their purchasing power, to put more money in their pockets, that becomes incumbent on the government, isn't it? I think very pertinent question, and there has to be a twin prone approach here. One is we need to keep in mind that the inflation rate over the past 10 years has been about an average of 5.5%, which means that if there is an individual and you assume that his salary or income is constant, right, and inflation happens, so his purchasing power gets reduced. So effectively, every year he must get a tax concession which must reduce his, which must improve his purchasing power to the extent of that inflation in that particular year. So first question is, has that benefit come by way of tax exemptions and reductions in the last 10 years? And answer appears to be no, it has not come. So I think this is the time when the Honorable Finance Minister is taking into consideration all these numbers and this benefit will come. So this is on the purchasing power uh, capacity or the power uh, of the middle class, etc., who are typically in the bracket of, you know, 8 lakhs to 20 lakhs. Now, let's talk about the second class of people who are in the range of income groups of more than 3 crores or 5 crores. Now, we know for a fact that the surcharge from 37% has been reduced to 25%. But to me, it appears that any surcharge on the rich would not be good for economy because what will happen is most of these rich people will shift their resources out of the country. They will have family offices. And the government has got this data. The government must today see that how many of these top income tax paying people who are, you know, the top 1,000 or uh, top 3,000 uh, people of the country have moved their assets outside of the country, have moved resources outside of the country by way of family offices. Now, if that happens, that will again be very detrimental as far as the tax to GDP ratio is concerned. So I think there has to be a balance because you can't tax the rich at a very high rate of, you know, 30% plus 25% surcharge. Yeah. And at the same time, you need to give basic exemptions to the middle class so right. that their purchasing power uh, increases. So I think it appears to us that the finance minister and the North Block will have a very balanced approach, a very pragmatic and robust approach to tackle the situation this year. 
So to be able to kind of bridge the gap between the rich and poor, Mitali, now that becomes an important ask of the government and something that uh, one would imagine they are working towards. How important would it be to have this kind of linkage with inflation when it comes to tax slabs to be able to arrest the widening gap as it were? So again, uh, Vikram, my view is that when we look at, you know, the reason for, you know, progressive taxation regimes, it's exactly this, right? That progressive taxation regimes uh, try to uh, optimize. And I agree with, uh, you know, with uh, Mr. Rasogi that at the end of the day, you cannot tax the rich too much because then it disincentivizes them from keeping their capital within the country. But, you know, what we do need is an optimized progressive taxation regime where you are, of course, taxing the rich at higher rates, but not at a rate at which they are disincentivized to pay tax completely. Also, in our country, we have a system where we have a lot more indirect taxes as opposed to direct taxes, you know, so a GST is now today second in revenue, um, you know, to the income tax. And in fact, income tax compliance rates are extremely low. So I think before we get into, you know, this discussion of inflation linked taxation regimes, uh, which again become very difficult to implement. Uh, we have to think about the number of slabs itself. You know, at the end of the day, if we can have a larger number of slabs, it makes the regime all the more progressive. And we can even increase the tax rates. At this point, there is still fiscal room to increase the tax rates on the richest uh, section of the population before they start completely migrating their capital out. But I totally agree that, you know, there, there is also a need to, when, if that is done on the direct tax side, then it also has to be, you know, accompanied by some reforms on the capital gain side, you know, to offset um, and, and have some of those, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of uh, uh, offsets uh, actually implemented. So there is a need to rebalance, as, as Mr. Rastogi rightly said. Exactly. But at the same time, we we cannot link this necessarily to inflation because inflation is on a more steady path in India. Right. Yes, we need a more progressive regime. Yes, we need more mm. rationalization of capital gains tax. Yes. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to be linked with so inflation. So when it comes to the ask of taxpayers today to ease the tax burden, Mr. Rastogi, you started talking about capital gains tax and that's where we see this indexation. But do we create much more... Uh, difficulty for taxpayers when it comes to compliance, when it comes to filling out forms, when it comes to calculations, is the need of the R to ease out the tax slabs to kind of make them, uh, I mean, not have as many, and then compliance-wise also to ease it out before we talk about indexation? Of course, I think rate rationalization is on the cards. We've been very vocal in a lot of discussion which we had with the Ministry of Finance. We've been talking about rate, rate rationalization. Rate rationalization is one on the consumption side. So the GST rates will have to be rationalized. Uh, 12 and 18 will have to merge possibly to 15 or 16. Very, very, very certainly. Because both the classification and the valuation disputes would get reduced uh, by merging of these rates. So that is one. On the income tax side, I think your question is very pertinent as well. Because what happens is that a lot of people come within the compliance network or framework to file these returns. And what happens if this basic threshold exemption is raised to possibly, let's say, 8 lakhs or 10 lakhs, uh, there will be less impact on the number of the government or the government exchequer. But at the same time, a lot of people will be out of the compliances because they will be required to file just nil return. So that will help a lot of individuals, a lot of salaried class. And I think that will be very, very comfortable for a lot of these people. So I think the government will have the twin approach, again, on the direct tax side by increasing the basic threshold limit uh, so that, you know, compliances are reduced for a large number of people. Second, as far as the GST is concerned, again, there could be schemes where the basic threshold increases for exemption. And also the rate rationalization happens because most of these disputes, today what we feel uh, are going to the courts is because of the rate disparity and uh, rate confusion. So that will reduce Overall, I think these rate rationalizations are essential, pertinent. It is on the cards. But and we hope that this uh, budget will make some good pragmatic announcements. What do you think? What is on your wish list? Let me ask you very quickly before I close. What should be the ideal tax slabs, Mr. Rastogi? 
So I think as far as GST is concerned, it must be 5%, 15%, and 30%. Three tax rates uh, for GST. As far as income tax is concerned, the basic threshold limit must be increased to at least 8 lakh rupees. So basically, anybody who's till the salary of 8 lakh rupees, no tax. As far as the rich is concerned, there must not be any surcharge because as the income increases, their contribution to the government exchequer also increases uh, in terms of actual numbers. And a lot of people will be encouraged not to go to countries like Dubai and park their assets outside of India or have their global incomes outside of India. India will actually uh, you know, earn quite a bit from you know, retaining this money in India and having the risk to pay tax in India. Mithali, very quickly from you as well. From sound economics point of view, what should we go with uh, when it comes to tax slabs this time? <laughs> so, you know, I'm not going to put uh, put such numbers as, as Vikram has put, but I do think that, you know, the surcharge should not be removed at this point. We do need the wealth surcharge um, because, you know, for progressive taxation, we do still need it. And I, But I completely agree that the tax up to, you know, even 10 lakhs, can be removed completely because at the end of the day, you know, the cost of collecting that money uh, versus the benefit that is coming from, you know, each marginal taxpayer below the, you know, income of around 10 lakhs is very low. So, you know, it costs you probably more to collect that taxation. So, you know, important to tax people who are going up to, uh, you know, a crore, two crores, three crores, and, and, you know, introducing more slabs up till that point and, and taxation should be much more on the rich as opposed to the poor. Well, we'll see exactly how it goes. Just before this discussion, I was ta talking to my team and they were saying, you know, we have inflation linked to some of the tolls that we pay today as well. As taxpayers, uh, this is the least that we should be asking for to kind of ensure that the government uh, puts more um, money in our pockets to be able to uh, deal with the kind of price rise that we are contending with on a day-to-day -day basis. But uh, we'll see exactly what, it, what happens when the budget is presented by the finance minister at, towards the end of this month. Uh, Abhishek Rastogi, Mitali Nikore, thank you very much for joining us on this discussion on Business at Nine.